One, two, three. Do it. Well, hello <laughs> and welcome. Did I scare you again? Oh my god! So startled. <laughs> Uh, Start with me. You're looking right at me when I say that. I know. Well, I mean, it's a good thing I wasn't startled. <laughs> it is good for both of us. This is a small space. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. Oh. Welcome, my fine feather friends out there. How the heck are y'all doing out there in the lands of the interwebs? The interwebs. We are coming at you half shirtless, windblown, and excited for another six weeks of winter because of that stupid groundhog. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, what, what's that stupid thing? Punxsutawney Phil? Punxsutawney. I think. What'd they name him after? Like a Native American tribe or something? Punxsutawney? Um, let's go with that. Okay, it sounds but right. I, I think they named him after the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> what came first? <laughs> the Groundhog movie or the Groundhog? Uh, well, I mean, they only got like a, a six-year lifespan. <laughs> Um, I've been a a nature ecologist for six and a half years, so I've seen the lifespan from beginning to end. People are going to get real tired of that real fast. Yeah, I doubt it. I mean, we're only nine episodes in. I mean, (laughs) we got at least two more in us. That's true. At least two. At least two. Yeah. I mean, we done broke the barrier. That's true. So. And uh, kind of in in a roundabout way, we got our first bit of uh, hate mail. Yeah, we did. I loved it. Not really mail, and not really anybody taking the time out to send us anything hateful, but we did get the infamous angry emoji left on one of our Facebook uh, posts. posts. Yeah. yeah, and it's the thought that counts. It really is the thought that counts. <laughs> <laughs> so we're excited even about our uh, our hateful Angry emoji post. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks to that wonderful... I'm going to go ahead and just call her Karen. Yeah. Yeah. I am glad you're doing well, and I hope all of you out there are doing well. I'm your host, Pastor Pinewood. Sending across for me, as always, is... Breezy! (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like you practiced that in the parking lot. (laughs) Yeah, I just left a hockey game. (laughs) And we are back here in the doghouse again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, uh, feel it. Oh, <laughs> feel it. Uh, oh, Rocky yeah, Jackson. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Randall Stevenson. Yeah. <laughs> I literally can never remember that guy's name. That, and it blows my mind every, every time. single time. And then every time I say his name, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's freaking yeah, it's Rocky Randy Jackson. Jackson from, <laughs> Randy Jackson from American Idol. You remember? No, that's, that's definitely not him, bro. <laughs> definitely not him. No, he did not make In the Doghouse Now on the album Testify. No. He did not. No, most certainly now, didn't. Now, <laughs> Rocky Jackson kind of threw us a little bit of a passive aggressiveness here recently. He did. And it's so beauty. we're, we're going to talk about him here in just a little bit because we are back in the doghouse. Yes. And uh, we got some <laughs> updates on that guy. I'm pretty excited about that. Brent, uh, BZ, I want to tell you something that I did stupid today. Okay. Now, on occasion... We do stupid stuff on occasion. Well, I mean, I don't, but people disagree with that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they're entitled to their opinions. <laughs> and the survey says... Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> uh, not Todd Tom stupid. That's fair. But uh, sometimes we do some stupid stuff. So I was on my way down here. I live in the northern Texas panhandle. Good mm-hmm. old Beezy lives down here, kind of in the middle of the Texas panhandle. Mm-hmm. And I'm driving down, and I was here a little bit early, and... Um, you weren't going to be home just yet, so I thought, well, I'll goof around. So I went to our other buddy's shop. He's got a little card shop, yep. uh, collectibles, comics, coins, that sort of thing. I'm mm-hmm. a coin guy, so I went in there. I can see that. Talked with him. Yeah, you, you know. definitely look like a I coin got that, guy. I got that look. Mm-hmm. Uh, rich, is that, is that what you mean? No, no. I mean, <laughs> you can definitely see. You, you, you'd be, you've got that hermit <laughs> coin collecting stamp collector. Dang, son, you nailed it. I do I, collect stamps. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Hey, man, <laughs> stop throwing shade. Okay, so I went there, and then I went to the cigar store. Did I redeem myself a little bit? A little by bit. By going to the cigar store. You did, okay. you and, did. And then I went to the beer store, so two good, one not so good. Yeah, that's that's amicable. Okay, so I'm driving back, going towards the highway that's going to bring me to your house. Okay. So I get to the highway. In which direction do I turn? The wrong way. You're going back home, bro. I'm going back north. Yeah. And, and I'm listening to a podcast and I didn't realize I was going back north, really, <laughs> until I got all the way past the loop where that old hotel is going out of town. Oh like, right before you get gosh. to the golf course. Yeah. And I was like, 
Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is we, this is the wrong way. We, we haven't finished our trip yet. <laughs> we so, hadn't even uh, begun the trip. <laughs> it's uh, It was pretty silly. Pretty silly, and I felt pretty silly. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, man, just uh, absent-minded. Uh, I want to remind everybody out there, please, if you have some time, go find us on the socials. We are on Instagram and Facebook. As always, really active on Facebook, probably more than any of them. And yeah. uh, we can accept your comments there, and we appreciate your likes and your shares for sure. So go check us out over there. That is um, at FWTG Podcast podcast at Facebook mm-hmm. or maybe uh, vice or versa. IG. IG and Facebook are at FWTG Podcast, or cool. you can just type in Frat and Eyes with these guys. You'll find us there. Do you remember how you abbreviated it before and pronounced uh, that abbreviation? Foot- <laughs> Foot- <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I've gone back to listen to that episode several times just for that. I mean, it's priceless. It is pretty good. There's some good pronunciation some on that. Wonderful so I can stuff. see rolling that W. <laughs> and we talked about it the last, I think, the last couple of episodes, but we do have our website semi yes. sort of rolled out. Like We've, we, man, I spent uh, quite a bit of time last weekend um, diving into something I've never done before. Yeah, no and, doubt. Uh, web design. Yeah. So, you should definitely go check out our hard work. My hard work. Yeah, definitely your it, hard work. Uh, the website is www.fwtgpodcast.com. Um, on there, we've got some pretty sweet integrations. Um, so you can actually rate the podcast. Not right, right there on the website? Yeah, on the website. Um, okay. You can rate the website. Um, sorry, not the website, but you can rate the podcast. Probably rate the website too. I mean, just let could. us know. Yeah, be like, hey, this is great. This is pretty or, cool. Uh, if you want to get under old Beezy skin, be like, hey, man, this is a piece of junk. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I would definitely take those too. <laughs> but uh, no, you can rate the podcast, and it will actually, when you submit that, it sends it straight to Apple Podcast, where all uh, all ratings are. Um, I guess they, they they weigh more on Apple Podcast than anywhere else, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, true. But we've also got it integrated for uh, some Facebook. So if you want to uh, listen to any of the episodes, you click on the episode and listen to it there. Or um, it also has the tags for any of the big platforms. Great. And you can also comment and you have the option to send the comment to Facebook as well that's from right. our website. That's right. And so. as we'll be learning here in just a little bit, you can even leave us a voicemail. Yes. Yeah. And if you leave us a voicemail, well, it might get played. It, it very well could be played. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, for those of you that uh, venture to the website um, on mobile or on the desktop, um, it's the little blue circle in the bottom right corner that has a microphone. You just click on it. And I'm glad then... you said that because it actually took me a little bit to find it. Yeah, I, I, was I can see that. With it. Yep, I can see that. Mainly because I collect coins. Yeah, well, <laughs> I got that look. Shape, maybe if we put it in the shape of a stamp, you would have known. Hey, you're probably right. I probably, probably would have like, licked oh, the yeah. screen. <laughs> <laughs> the Stosberries taste like Stosberries. <laughs> <laughs> All right, also... Um, we'll plug socials a little bit later and, uh, we don't mean to spend so much time on the website, but you know, we're proud of it. I it's, am. I'm very proud good of stuff. it. I want to introduce everyone to our, uh, our brand new mascot in our guard dog. Oh, snap. His name is Sin, Sin Valor. Valor. <laughs> uh, Sin Valor is the beefiest of all beefcakes when it comes to dogs. Yep. He's massive. Has to be. And he's a pit bull and he'll eat you. Um, he takes care of all of us. He makes sure to guard both of our families. He guards the podcast equipment because we haven't paid this crap off mm-hmm. yet. Got to make sure it's uh, taken care of. He guards the doghouse here, and he guards the barn with the farm animals as well. The barn at the farm. Uh, <laughs> almost like he can be two places at once. It's it's impressive. He's very impressive. He does, however, despise all hippies. <laughs> if you're a hippie of any gender or race, He's not going to like you. Nope. Sin Valor is allergic to water, so he subsides fully on copious amounts of domestic beer and spent cigar butts. Yeah. So he's a he's a mean one. Nicotine, rage-fueled <laughs> pity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are some rules around Sin Valor. Of course. No sudden movements. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. No dancing. Mm-hmm. No mm-hmm. loud noises. Well. No No singing. No, yeah. no yelling, no celebrating in any way for any reason. Yep. So it's going to be a little quiet around the parts for uh, Super Bowl this weekend. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Probably not going to watch that anyways. Yeah, probably not either. <laughs> uh, those activities are to be avoided at all costs. Yeah. Because he'll, uh, he'll eat your face. He'll eat you. Yeah. So welcome Sin Valor. And uh, we actually hope to have some merch soon. And Sin Valor will definitely be making an appearance on mm-hmm. some koozies, some shirts, and some other things. And speaking of koozies, yeah, what are the rules for the latest koozie giveaway? Because those things are pretty sweet. Yeah, we actually did our first koozie giveaway on the Facebook out of the first hundred people that oh, uh, yeah, that's liked, right. And, that's right. liked and what followed the page, I think that's right. We did kind of a random draw and picked out three. We had uh, we got Adam and Jared and Gabe, and they have all three picked them up. And if you check Facebook, they actually took pictures. Yeah, they did, and uh, uploaded them to the Facebook. Yeah, good it's folks. Pretty sweet. So yeah. I mean, we're gonna be doing uh, random stuff like that throughout the next several months while we're uh, tinkering with some merch ideas. Yep. Um, and I think we'll do the next, uh, next couple people that shoot us a voicemail. Okay. You want to we'll, do like the next two? Yeah, we'll do the next two. All right. Um, you shoot us a voicemail, we'll get some information from you, and then, uh, congratulations, you just want a koozie. Nice. And we'll throw a koozie the way of the gentleman who left, uh, our first voicemail. That's true. Which was me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah you te- don't get one, bro. I, I was testing it out, bro. It doesn't count. It do- why, why is it that it doesn't count? Because <laughs> you're helping me make the stupid oh, things. Oh, that's right. Okay. So the first real. The first real. Okay. Well, fourth real one. We're going to hear from him here in just a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, we are introducing a new segment, and um, this is going to be our update segment. Yes. So we're going to be doing this kind of towards the beginning of the episode, just to take care of some crap in previous episodes. Ep- 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 episodes? Ep- episodes? Episodes. Episodes. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> Cue the music. The episode. We got some news updates for you here. Dude, I was trying not to laugh my hardest. I really was. Where did you come up with that voice? Oh, man. So it's... Uh... And so I, I first thought it was Hank Hill. Like, I thought you were doing the Hank Hill. <laughs> so it's uh, Rodney Carrington has this old bit where oh, he's... Oh, shoot. That's right. He's That's talking right. about the preacher when you're sitting there at church. And he, we got some new people here today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell, I dropped a crayon. What do you say? <laughs> oh, that's great stuff. Well, um, we'll start with uh, our very first message that was left through our web website. Yep, through the website, we had a uh, a voice. The very first voice message that wasn't um, an employee. Okay, uh, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> testing, um, and he actually had a pretty awesome update uh, for the episode ponder, seven. Yeah, ponder this um, uh, for episode seven. All right, let's hear what he has to say. Hey guys, so uh, y'all pondered this the other day about Humpty Dumpty. I just wanted to give you a fun fact that Humpty Dumpty is actually believed to be a cannon in the Colchester Siege of 1648. And it was destroyed. The wall that it was sitting on was destroyed. And because of its size, when it fell down, they couldn't get it back up and okay. put back together. That's huh. why... All the king's horses and all that good the stuff. King's man. Wow. Also, the reason why we think he's an egg is because of Lewis Carroll. The uh, egg sense. character in Lewis Alice Carroll. in Wonderland is named Humpty Dumpty. Okay. <laughs> all right. Fascinating. The more you know. The more. <laughs> <laughs> so Humpty Dumpty was originally a cannon. I like that uh, even I better. Too. Yeah. That's a lot cooler than an egg. I'll tell you what. The next <laughs> AR I get, I'm going to call it call Humpty, Humpty Dumpty. Dumpty. <laughs> <laughs> If you didn't listen to last week's episode, we, we had a pretty interesting uh, yeah. question and four questions yeah, about an little, AR. Yeah, little AR discussion. Well, I'll tell you what, before we get too much further into anything, uh, let's go to my favorite of all the segments, uh, which is a little bit of, uh, what do we call, Libations Library. Dig it, man. Dig Still. it. Still. If you're listening in headphones, you could go back 10 seconds and press the headphones in to your ears just a little bit so that you don't hear any outside noise. 
and you can hear the original reverberations yeah. behind you whenever you stop, and it's it's really awesome. Yeah. Whoever your producer was, top-notch, man. Yeah, we should put him on our team. <laughs> <laughs> Beasy, what are we drinking today? All right. Well, today this is a uh, another first for the Libations Library. It we is. are going That's to do right. a sour ale. Okay. So, so just to be clear, the last two weeks we've done meads. Yes. Which deserve an asterisk. Yes, they got the Barry Bonds mark. Yes, they did. This one, however, an ale is a beer. That's that's true. So we'll be judging it as a beer. Even though it's a sour, it won't have its own category. Right. Okay. And also, I meant to say this earlier, the Libations Library found on our website um, is up, and we'll begin putting some of our rankings in there, but it's under construction. Yes. Because we still got to figure out how to make it work with your... Uh, with, with your with, inputted data. Yes, thank you. So that's we're going to have to find somebody. Wonderful way to say that. Man, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm getting better at this. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about this tasty brew. So this is, uh, this is from the Great Divide Brewing Company. It is the Strawberry Rhubarb Sour Ale. Um, strawberry and Rhubarb. Strawberry Rhubarb. Okay, Man, all right. I do love me some strawberry I rhubarb. I do, too. I do, too. I'm not sure how I'm going to like it in my beer. I'm... <laughs> I'm leery. Now, have you not had, Dennis Leary? Have you had some? <laughs> have you uh, have you had some sours before? I have. I I just recently started dabbling in the sours field. Okay, and your initial impression overall? Well, the very first one that I got was about three months ago, and it was a beautiful can, and it was <laughs> <laughs> it said pumpkin pie. <laughs> <laughs> or mama's mama's pumpkin pie or something like that. I was like, oh, that'd be interesting beer. Okay. And cracked it open and uh, about broke my front teeth gritting. Because <laughs> you, when you're not expecting a sour and it, you're expecting a beer. Yeah. That, uh, that that's a rude awakening. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a bit jarring. Yeah, it definitely yes. turned out good. And uh, I've, I've actually had quite a few since then and really been kind of enjoying them nice now where can we find this this uh this beer if you're out there listening where where can we point the folks um so you can go to their website it is greatdivide.com. um you can pick up they've got several different beers um this particular one uh, i know they have this at uh, most of your not not your convenience stores um, but anywhere that's going to have a craft beer section, right. uh, it's typically going to be there. Yeah. So now the great, great divide is out of Colorado, and they have national distribution. Um, I, I, I assume they have national distribution because they're a pretty big brewery. Yeah, and uh, the vanilla porter was kind of their flagship for many years, um, and it's very good. Also, not to stray too far from this beer because it's typically not what we do, but the Yeti from Great Divide is fantastic. It is a great. Great you know, I almost picked it because that's a stout, isn't yes, it? Yes, and it's a hefty stout, too. Yeah. That's a good beer. So, anyway, without further ado, let's get into this uh, strawberry rhubarb sour ale from Great Divide. Pop a top again. I think I'll have another round. Another one, my friend. Conway Twenty is going to sue us. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, I don't think he's around anymore. No, so he's, he's going to be Conway Twitty's um, estate. Estate. <laughs> um, okay, initial thoughts. Really well balanced for a sour. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not near as sour as I was expecting it to be. No, it, it, some sours, as soon as you hit it, like it makes your te- teeth rattle. Mm-hmm, and it's, mm-hmm. it's a little bit much. Uh, this one is not that. It's it's well balanced. It's got a wonderful sweetness to it. I can taste the strawberry and the tartness of the rhubarb, mm-hmm. um, and the the bitterness of the ale also is there a bit. Uh, it's pretty good on the nose. Yeah, you can actually smell the sour. Yeah, you can. Which and, is and the strawberry. Yeah, well, I didn't smell that, but it's there. Okay, I'll just take your word for it. It's there. Um, I got them West Texas allergies. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had we've had some uh, windstorms last mm, last yeah. week or so. Uh, so great beer. Uh, I'm very very happy with it. This is one that would be this is one that would be sip worthy summer afternoon. Sure, sitting on the back porch just chilling for a little bit. And I would uh, want this beer to be as cold as possible. Yeah, I can see me uh, sitting on the couch in the summer. And smoking a uh, 
strawberry rhubarb pie mm. on the uh, pellet grill. Yeah, you have smoked a strawberry rhubarb I have, pie, and it turned out phenomenally. Yeah, most people would say it sounds weird. It's, it does. It sounds weird, but it it turned out quite good. Okay, all right. Um, any thoughts on your ranking on this guy? You know, I gotta say, I when I'm drinking a sour, I kind of. I'm kind of enjoying the the really the pucker effect. Yep. Um, this doesn't necessarily have the pucker effect that I was looking for. I agree. So, I mean, I'm going to give it a nice middle of the road. I'm going to go 73 for this guy. Really? A 73. Because wow. cool. it's not terrible, but I've had, and granted, I've just barely got into it. Yep. But I've had everyone before has been better. Oh, wow. That's saying something. Um, mm. So I'm, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna slightly disagree. This is probably one of the better sours that I've had that I that I have sat and enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I didn't know what I was looking for going into it, so I didn't really have any expectations set. Uh, I would prefer a little bit more on the sour side. Uh, however, I think it's, I think it's extremely well rounded. Okay. And I think it's a very drinkable drink. And also, I think this would be a good drink for men and women both. Yeah. It's got that sweetness to it. It's got a black and pink can. Yeah, so black and pink. That always perfect goes Perfect well. for the month of November. There you go. So maybe Wait, no, if is you're it October? A, it's definitely not October. What's the... Uh, oh, I the, thought you meant like right now. Like for... Like, no, it's February, bro. No, no. no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I know what day it is. I know what month we're in. <laughs> well, people are wondering. <laughs> they, they do the... What's the Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Isn't oh, that October? I, I don't know. That yeah, feels like it should be. I yeah. remember orange or purple. Jesus. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> I can't even talk. You even, you even called on the <laughs> Lord there. <laughs> Help uh, me, Jesus. <laughs> so I, I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to go an 82. Okay. And so I, I like it, and I think it's I think it'd be a great beer to have at a party. If, if people are coming in and they're just going to grab something, maybe mm-hmm. something you just got in the fridge, um, it'd be hard to miss with this one. Okay. I think everybody's going to enjoy it, well-rounded. And again, on those hot months... Good, good beer to have, just as cold as possible. I sure. Do like it. I do wish it was a touch more sour, uh, but I like it. All right. Well, All right. So it is also go ahead. 6.2%. Really? Yeah. Okay. Most of the sour is a little bit lower than that. Yeah. And uh, I've had one sour that's up to nine. Good grief. And it was like super, super sour. It was not to, great. You had to give me that one okay. um, after we record because I'm kind of interested to try that. All one. right, I'll let you have that one. Um, I like it. I dig it, and I really like the strawberry and the rhubarb. Both of them come out to me. I do enjoy that. So you're at a 72. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it about an 82, 83. So we got a C and a B. Yeah. And uh, if you guys are out there and you try this beer, we'll post it on our Facebook page later this week, yep. and uh, you can see all the information there. You can go check them out. Uh, at thegreatdivide.com. That's right? Yep. Okay. Uh, no, just greatdivide.com. Okay. Not the Great Divide. Okay. All right. Well, go check them out, and uh, we'll have some more of their beers in the future because they're they're pretty good. Yeah. Pretty tasty. All right. That that can... Fi- Goodness, I'm having a stroke, too. Is it contagious? <laughs> so. Something in the air? <laughs> Holy cow. No, we oh. got that uh, dust blocker. <laughs> Some, that, something going on in our... I, you know what? That concludes... Our libations library for the there day. There we go. There we go. So let's go right <laughs> into uh, four questions. Four questions. All right. So our four questions intro back to the normal one this week. Yeah, clearly. And uh, <laughs> that's actually a mistake on my part. So next week we'll go back to the uh, the crazy one. Uh, BZ, I'm going to let you start with question number one. All right. Question one. This comes from, well, I'll just let you guess. Anonymous. Yeah. Okay. You got it. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it the Guy Fox Anonymous, like uh, Conspiracy Anonymous, or is it just like just a random no, Anonymous? Okay. No, this is just straight <laughs> up Anonymous. Okay, got it. So Anonymous says, um, can I buy a new car without test driving it? Um, I'm not a great driver. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait. Mm-hmm. Can I buy a new car without test driving it? Yeah. Well, yeah. What's the question? Well, it's coming. Okay. Uh, well, that was part that of the, that the was that was the first part of the question. Second okay. part of the question is coming up. Okay, because this person continues, and I I'm gonna say it's a she. Um, I'm not a great driver, 
Um, and kind of scared to test drive, and my sense of direction is pretty bad without <laughs> a GPS. However, money is not an issue. Can I just walk into a dealership and buy a new car up front? Okay. Um, in scene. <laughs> I do like the uh, money is not an issue. Yeah. I'm going to say that's not true. Yeah. Because it's, it's an issue. Money is... is Especially when you're buying a car. Even, even if you don't test drive it, you still need to haggle. I mean, come on. And you don't need to borrow you are for a, a 60000 You are a car salesman's wet dream. That's true. <laughs> but I'm saying, even if you don't test drive it, even if the car is not important to you, you just need something to drive. If, if you make $30,000 a year, mm-hmm. you don't need to buy a $60,000 car. Well, and a lot unless of you're need to know that one, unless you're a multi multi millionaire, money's probably going to be a factor. <laughs> and I don't think old uh, Guy Anonymous. Fox over here is. Gonna, <laughs> I, uh, I'm pretty sure money's an issue. Okay, so the point is, he's going to walk in, or she. Cat, oh, okay, okay. I'm going to go ahead and say she because it's uh, it, it starts the second part of the question with I'm not a great driver. Ah, it's fair. It's a little sexist. But it it rings true. I mean, it really checks out. Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, you walk in. You you got cash in hand or check in hand. You're ready to purchase. Mm-hmm. No test drive. So whose word are you going to take for the car? You're left with the car salesman. Mm-hmm. And we all know how trustworthy and wonderful car salesmen yeah, are. Yeah, they're great folk. Yeah, g- wonderful people. <laughs> they would never sell something they wouldn't put their personal stamp on. Yeah, especially for sticker. <laughs> so you're saying that they're looking for this person. Mm-hmm. So That's this- what I'm saying. They are a car salesman's <laughs> wet dream. Okay. Um, I'm going to say yes, you can with a big old butt. <laughs> Um, yes you can big old butt Uh, but you you should you definitely should should not Uh, take somebody with you yes and apparently you've never done this before so definitely take somebody with you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when was your when did you buy your first vehicle you personally bought a vehicle oh good grief man I've drank since then so, I don't believe you. Probably 20-ish. You're about 20? Yeah, when I bought it. Was that that little uh, neon? No, 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 no. It was the uh, the Explorer. I don't even remember you having an Explorer. Yeah, I know. I know. What happened it was to it? Right, uh, I actually traded it in for an Impala. I don't even... Re- oh, I do remember the Impala. Yeah. I do remember that. That is... That is after we firebombed your Dodge Neon. The Dodge Neon. Yeah. And that yeah. was given to you by your par- step parents? Yeah. Okay. Well, my mom and stepdad, yeah. Okay. All right. That was good times. Yeah. Okay. When I was in high school, I was a big, I'm still a, a VW fan, old school mm-hmm. VW. Well, so trust I, me. I remember. Oh, yes. So I had Many a 1963 a Volkswagen Beetle. Now, when I bought it, they wanted $1,700 for it. And we, we went to the car show because it was an old Volkswagen show and they had it stickered. And I walked up to the lady, and I said, what do you want for your vehicle? She said, $1,700. So I said, okay. So I did the little trick where you where you don't say anything. They say their price, and you don't say anything. You just walk around and look at stuff. And she said, I'll, I'll take 16 I bet you'll go lower. <laughs> and I said, I said, will you take fourteen five or fourteen fifty whatever? And she said, yeah, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. So I got 14, 14, 14,000, not 14,000, 1450, I wasn't, I wasn't into thousands yet, <laughs> <laughs> not, not 14,000 yet. But the reason I knew how to do that because my dad taught me how to haggle. Mm-hmm. I think that's a skill young people need. Most certainly. And I bet you that is a dying thing. Oh yeah. I bet there's well, some. Most people now are just, I mean, they've got several car sites where you can buy a car online. That's true. And literally have it shipped to your house. How wild. <laughs> how wild is that? It is wild. Can you imagine not going and test driving a vehicle before it shows up at your house and you just forked over however 200 or 200,000. Good grief. That'd be a pretty impressive <laughs> car. <laughs> I mean, that chauffeur better bring it. Yeah. And he's going to drive it for me. Yeah. 
Well, let's just let's let's play this out for a second. Now we're a little bit on the old school side. If somebody, let's say we have a, a pickup that we really like, it's thirty thousand dollars. Okay, it's got fifty thousand miles on it, and we really want it, mm-hmm. and it comes with three years warranty. So it's uh, not that old. It's not that old, you know. But I'm I'm talking bumper to bumper, powertrain, the whole deal. Everything's under warranty for three years. Okay. Sight unseen, they're going to deliver it to your house, and you don't get to test drive it. Okay. Would you take that particular gamble? Ooh, it's tough. Oh man, because I'm probably going to. I'm going to ask for the Carfax. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. What if you have all that information? It's all given. There's a warranty on it, and. I think the thing that sells that would be the warranty. Mm-hmm. Cause well, of course, that's you know that's 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 kind of the proof in the pudding, right? Yeah, proof of the pudding. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, God bless that guy. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> God smite that guy. Yeah, maybe he's got smite that Damn. guy. I believe. I wonder if he ever bought a car without test driving it. Probably not. Probably not. Try he, to slip it some pills, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he had the show first, so he could sit in the back and slip the pills. Oh, we got off on our... Uh, it's bad. Wow. How, how did we get off on that, channel? I don't know. Oh, so anyways, cars. Yep. Buy it before test driving it. Probably not. Terrible idea. Yep, terrible idea. Take somebody with you. And if you are... In, just a little bit of information. If you are a young lady in the market to buy a vehicle, I'm not saying this to sound sexist. Take an older gentleman with you. Mm-hmm. Even if he's there and doesn't say anything, you'll probably get a better price and you probably won't. You're not as prone to getting ripped off. Correct. And that has nothing to do with the young lady. That has everything to do with sleazy car salesmen. Yep. So they have that reputation for a reason. For a reason. Deal. Yep. <laughs> yep. Even in today's time. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. Test drive it. Yep. Have Agreed. Somebody. Yep. And also, uh, do some work on your sense of location, sense of direction. Yeah. Because that, that'll serve you well in life. Certainly. Yep. Especially if you end up in a trunk. <laughs> if, you, if you know the bumps in the roads. Oh, yeah, that's right. Then uh, you got a pretty good idea where you're headed. Yeah, most people would not. Think would, that way? <laughs> well, no, probably not think that way for sure. But uh, most people would be up a creek in that well, particular situation. Yeah, that's true. It is true. <laughs> All right, question number two. Now, I'm going to read this question, and then I'm going to tell you who it's from and see if it changes your opinion. Okay. Here's the question. Is it weird my dog likes to watch me pee? Whenever I open the door... <laughs> you're not supposed to laugh. It's a, it's a genuine question. Is it weird? I wasn't ready for that, Weird dude. my dog likes to watch me pee. It would be weirder if you like to watch your dog pee. Yeah. That would be weirder. Um, but, okay, so let's just go with that. Uh, this person goes on. Whenever I open the door to go into the bathroom, my dog comes sprinting across the house and follows me into the bathroom and just sits there and waits for me and stares at me with his huge brown eyes. Is that weird? Well, now, think about it. Okay. It's from Sarah. Huh. So she's probably sitting to pee. <laughs> I would I would hope so. I would hope so. Oh, Wow. Uh, initially, I want to say, yeah, that's that's weird. But, it's a little strange. Uh, I mean, I like to watch me pee. <laughs> what, uh, what, what? Yeah, ma- mainly just because I got to make sure I get it in the bowl. Okay, but, okay, uh, that makes sense. I mean, for the dog to watch you pee, that's not so far-fetched if you think about it because 99% of the time, you're watching the dog go pee. That's true. So maybe usually waiting just, for them to do their business, do so you their can get business? back in the house. Exactly. So maybe you're setting a bad precedent. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that it's it's your your blame right now. Oh, so Sarah's the one messing up. Yeah. So if she would just throw the dog outside mm. and then go back inside, then maybe the dog wouldn't have uh, have been so interested in watching her go pee. I think maybe we're giving the dog a little bit too much credit. Well, it depends on what kind of breed it is. That's a good point. If it's Sin Valor, it's Sin Valor. You better not get up too fast to go pee. Yeah, staying right, <laughs> staying right, and don't don't be making too much noise in there. Now you better not be pooping. <laughs> <laughs> He'll rip your leg off. That's right. Uh, he don't even care. I think I think the answer to this is it's not weird, mainly because your dog just wants to be around you. Yeah. Typically, it doesn't matter what you're doing. They just want to hang out. I'm still thinking that 
the uh, the dog owner has ingrained it into them that potty time is community time. Okay, it's a joint activity. Yeah, so I'm going pee. Master's out here watching me pee. <laughs> so Master goes pee. <laughs> Whoa, I better boy. go in there and check it out. Make sure there's no uh, those there's no turlet trolls. A what? A turlet trolls. <laughs> a toilet troll. A, a turlet. Is that what I just tried to say. It's a turlet troll. Yeah. Uh, fat tongue. Got, got a fat tongue. Um, it's that West Texas wind. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, so no, not weird. Uh, but you've made it weird. Uh, maybe posting that online. Yeah, definitely. That's weird. <laughs> it's so weird, in fact, that we found it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like it. Answer to that question, problem solved. Number yes. three. Number three. Why do men interrupt so often? This is coming from cat. Is it coming from a cat? No, not a not a kitty cat. Oh. It's, it's cat with a K. K-A-T. Wow. This is why do men interrupt so often? So we could probably say Karen. I mean, that feels it. It feels comfortable. Definitely feels like a Karen esque type mm-hmm, question mm-hmm. for sure. Okay. Well, Cat Karen goes on to say, uh, "This happens to me all the time." And Wouldn't then it be has... funny if I just constantly interrupted you reading? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. This question. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I, w- I won't interrupt anymore. So, oh, no, that was the whole question. Oh, that's it? Yeah, this oh. happens to me all the time. And then they had that nice little emoji with the uh, frowny face with the zipper over it. Oh, okay. It makes no sense for no. the emoji, but... This happens to me all the time. Maybe you're allowing yourself to be interrupted. Or maybe you're just talking too damn much. <laughs> now that, that's a probability. That's a yeah. good, strong probability. Exactly. Um, I'm not going to go so far as to say most women talk too much. I'm going to go so far as to say most people, y'all talk too much. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, and if you're around Sin Valor, he's going to chew you up. <laughs> um, I don't mind a little a little chit-chat here and now, here mm-hmm. and again. Mm-hmm. I'm a pastor. Small talk, that's kind of a thing. You know, you do it Sunday mornings. You do that Wednesday night. You do it with people you know. It's just it's part of the game, right? Yep. But... I don't overly enjoy sitting down and just kind of chatting all the time. Right. And as a matter of fact, it gets pretty old pretty quick. I can imagine. And so one of the ways you could maybe put a stop to that is interrupt and then skadoosh. Um, you just uh, you just leave. <laughs> I got diarrhea. I got to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> How uncomfortable can we make this uh, to get the heck out of here? Get away from Cat Karen. Mm-hmm. Cat Karen. Any thoughts? Um, yeah, there was actually a pretty interesting answer. Um, they they pulled up a uh, a link that says uh, women use an average of twenty thousand words a day, compared to a mere seven thousand that men utter. Oh. Ah. so I wonder where they got that statistic. Um, mensrights.com. <laughs> <laughs> There's no link provided. Se- seems legit. <laughs> but it feels like it fits. <laughs> so how many words do you have to be uttering for those 7,000 to constantly be interrupting your 20,000? <sighs> well, I think you're uttering uh, one too many words with the 20,000. That's what it sounds like to me. Because that's that's a lot. Yeah, that's quite a bit. It's like... 13,000 more. I wonder how many words we speak when we do this podcast. I wonder if that bumps our average up. Um, Probably not. We probably hover around 7,000. Oh, Matt, I need you to get on this. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to every episode and log all of our words. <laughs> uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, we have a stalker. and uh, He's the best stalker. He, he's a good guy, but uh, <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's a little creepy. I know, it's awesome. But it is awesome. And he's my brother. Yeah, <laughs> good guy. Uh, Matt, we appreciate you, all the stuff that you've done. He did some interesting uh, clerical work type stuff. Yes. Like stuff that would drive me crazy, and he just did it. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Um, Championness runs in the family. I, well, I'm not going to go quite that far. <laughs> but All right, so number three, uh, probably you're speaking a little bit too much. Yes. And uh, maybe you don't think so hard about some of this stuff. Agreed. Okay. Maybe... Sit back and listen a little bit more. Ooh, philosophizing. A little bit. 
maybe you just learn some more interesting stuff. To yeah. Talk about. I don't. We're talking about your cat, cat. I t- <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to hear about that damn thing. I tend to not interrupt people that I find interesting. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, let's go right into number four. I got a doozy for question number four. Ooh, I'm uh, excited. This comes from Bill Kill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so coming at you hot. Go. Yeah. So Bill Kill posts in the health optical section of Yahoo Answers, which is uh, it's a good start. That's uh, we've never had anything out of that section. I don't think we have, and you might find out why after this. Okay. His question is: Some dirt got. Okay, hang on. Okay. okay. His question isn't until the end. He, ah. he gives he gives a statement first, and then he asks about how to deal with the the statement. That's the question. Some dirt got in behind my eyeball. Well, <laughs> yeah. that will happen in West Texas, yeah, by the way. Definitely. Some dirt got in behind my eyeball. What would be the best way to remove my eye, clean the socket, Whoa. and pop it back in? Will it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Holy uh, cow. So, uh, Bill Kill is a Todd Tom, uh, for, for sure. sure. Um, and I love... Some of the answers, but I wanted to hear your answer first. Oh my god! How how might one go about that? How much lidocaine does he have access to? <laughs> Probably. That, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say you're gonna need something a little stouter than lidocaine. Well, not if you dump it straight into your ocular hole. Yeah, maybe <laughs> that's the medical term. By Is the way. it <laughs> <laughs> the optical hole? Your ocular. <laughs> oh, ocular hole. Your ocular hole. <laughs> It sounds like a transformer. <laughs> uh, ocular hole. Take the form of a VW bus. <laughs> um, my recommendation is you don't do this. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to numb it up. Ooh, hang on. Okay. How's about this? This would be a great way to pop the eyeball out. Okay. Super, super fast. All right. Probably going to hurt like hell. However, okay, so the answer to the second question is yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. Okay, you gonna but, be hurt. But at least you will get that speck of dust. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, this is gonna be two birds right here, bro. So what you do, you get yourself an air compressor, and you crank that sucker up to about 300, 350 <laughs> psi. <laughs> you get one of those little blower nozzles, <laughs> hold it right between your eyelid and your lower eyeball, <laughs> and just do a quick little. Pss- Okay. I mean, eyeballs out, dust is gone. All right. Um, two birds. Two birds. <laughs> I don't know. About the only way you get back in is just do it in reverse. I just get it kind of set and then shoot it right back in. <laughs> I'm going to need a turkey baster stat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is just a, a terrible idea. Okay. All right. Maybe. Okay. Do you remember not to say, shamelessly plug... The Skeptical Zealot. Okay. But the Skeptical Zealot podcast, we talked about the Middle Ages and mm-hmm. the the plague, right? Yes. And we talked about how some of the the villagers were, were doing two things to rid themselves of the plague. Number one, they were drinking themselves silly every day. Yeah. That was the first that was the first line of defense. That's where I'd have gone. Okay. So I'm just gonna drink beer all day long. Those monks are up there giving it to me for mm-hmm. free. I'll pass out and hopefully the plague won't get me. The other way they were deterring the plague was they were marching down streets in the cities in lines, literally flogging themselves with whips. Yep. So maybe this guy is trying to ward off COVID by following the <laughs> biblical edict of removing the stack of dust from his own eye. And maybe this is the way, in his mind, he's wrapping it around. So basically, he just needs to flog himself <laughs> in, until- the, in the eyeball. Or just flog himself until it works itself out. Oh. So uh-huh. you just, like, right in the back of the head yeah, over and over again? just back of the head. <laughs> just what? just beat that speck of dust to the front of your face. Oh. So not not hit yourself so hard your eyeball pops out. No, you don't do that. Oh, okay. You, you got to work that dust. <laughs> <laughs> work that dust on out, son. <laughs> work that dust, baby. <laughs> I do, I do like one answer that was given on here, and the guy's name that he left was just a question mark for the answer, which Beauty. is pretty funny. Yeah, so not a Todd Tom at all, uh, a genius because nice. his answer is brilliant. He says, "Just pull it out, but not too hard that you sever the optic nerves." 
<laughs> sounds <laughs> sounds like good sound medical advice. <laughs> Just make sure to wear a glove. You want a sterile nitrite glove. Because you don't want to get any infection in your eyeball. That's right. That's right. So uh, make sure you're not near a bathroom because you know people can fart, and that's the instant pink eye if your eyeball's out. Is it like a fecal partis- partis- particulates? Particulates. There you go. Hey, hey you helped me out there. I appreciate that. Yeah, I helped you out with a word. <laughs> word nerds unite. Word nerds. <laughs> hey, I got a question for you. Okay. Spun off of this question because of that. Whenever I was in high school, I used to take my contacts out. And I'd put them in a little contact holder, and I wouldn't. Ne- I'd never put the lid back on it because I was a slob okay. in high school. And my dad got super disgusted that I was always leaving my contacts out. Right? He poured vodka in it. No, he didn't. Oh, that'd have been cooler. But he would. He would tell me. He would say, "I poop in here, <laughs> and there's <laughs> there's a possibility you're getting your old man's poop in your eyeball." <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I started putting the lids on my contacts after that. How many times did you get pink eye? I didn't. I didn't ever get pink eye, and I'm pretty sure. Not that you're gonna. It's because that's not true. Admit. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's true. But my point is, it worked. Well, it worked. That that <laughs> certainly would get the caps on for sure. Don't want your dad's poop in your eyeballs. In your eyeballs. <laughs> or if you do, you might have to pop your eyeball out and clean it. Yeah, and stick it back in. You're gonna want something <laughs> hefty for that. I'm talking a scour pad. Ooh, maybe SOS pad. Dang, Ajax soap. Get some Ajax. Ooh. Maybe some lava. Lava soaps. <laughs> oh man, and that stuff will that stuff will rub you rub you pretty raw. Yeah, yeah, that's rough stuff. But it will it'll get the grease off. Most certainly will. All right, four questions in the in the bag today. Yes, it is. I feel like we've done our service for humanity. Yep. We have a bonus question. We do. I forget about this. Yes. Uh, so this this bonus question was a uh, uh, voicemail sent to us. User submitted. User submitted. Noise. And by the so, way, you can submit your questions. That's correct. They are. They can be absurd. They can be real questions. They probably shouldn't be medical questions because, as you can tell, I am a medical professional, <laughs> and my Hippocratic oath prevents me from telling you too many medical things over the air. Oh, I see. I do yeah. no harm. My, my hypocrite. My hang Hi- on, I'm trying to think. Hip- Hi- hypocratic. No, hypocritical. Hi- no, <laughs> my hypocritical. Hip- my hypocritical, hypocritical oath. 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 That sounds about right. <laughs> this is right. Hip- mouth diarrhea. Hippocratic, not so much. <laughs> yeah, my hypocritical oath. Uh, the extent of my Hippocratic uh, oath ex- ex- extends to you are what you eat. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a pretty safe bet because he said that, you know, a thousand years, a couple thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's good. All right, you ready to listen to this? Now, this is from uh, this Brady. This is from Brady. Yeah, and this is, uh, well, I'll just let him say it. Yeah, I've got a question for you. Uh, this one's for Pastor Pinewood specifically. Ooh. Uh, which is better, is. Bond or Brian? Oh. Obviously, we both know the right answer, but uh, <laughs> I I just want to see where your thought process is on it. Kind of what? Oh shoot, Brady! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, um, but I got the gist of the question. And so, if y'all are confused, we know who he's talking about. Yeah. yeah. And so, the great band ACDC uh, <laughs> had two. Well, they actually had three singers. Uh, there was a gentleman named Mark Evans at the beginning, but. Okay, here's the answer. Here's the answer that Brady's looking for. Bon, bon Scott. He Bon Scott is the better vocalist. Now, there's there's a couple of reasons. The first one is Bon Scott wrote all of his material. Mm-hmm. And he wrote all of his material with Angus and Malcolm. So yep. those three together did all the albums between High Voltage and Highway to Hell. And they're some of the greatest old rock albums out there. And the album Power Age... Um, is one of the most technically brilliant, probably the most technically brilliant album that they did, as well as the lyrics that correspond are fantastic. It's a great album. And, and as a connoisseur of ACDC, I would definitely label that myself, and I know Brady is as well. Yeah. That's probably both of our favorite albums to listen to as connoisseurs. However, that's, that's, that's the quick, dirty, easy answer, because Bon Scott was... Done Dirt Cheap. Yeah, he the did. The Dirt Cheap answer? That is the Dun Dirt Cheap answer. And also <laughs> the uh, the Highway to Hell answer because it's a good one. And wow. uh, we miss him a lot. Yep. Now, there's a however, though. However. I don't know 
I would tend to doubt that ACDC would have been where they are today without his death and the bringing in of Brian Johnson. Yep. The Back in Black album that came out in 1980 and the 81 album, For Those About to Rock, were such monumental hits around the globe that ushered them into where they are today. I just, I don't know if Bon Scott would have done that for them. Hmm. Not saying he wouldn't have, or they wouldn't have got this big, but I do know for a fact that the Back in Black album would not have existed without Bond's death. Now, wasn't there a point in time where Axl Rose was the lead man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, here, here recently, actually. Yeah, I know. And uh, the, so Brian Johnson, they're all old, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're in their 60s and 70s, and one of them's going up on uh, uh, towards 80. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm has passed, yep. and uh, they're using one of their other uh, cousins, I believe. And his name is, gosh, I think his name is George Young, I think. And so they're they're up there. Well, Brian Johnson also races cars. And between why not? Because why not? It, between and I bet you he didn't. I bet you he always test drove his race cars before he yeah. bought them. <laughs> he probably <laughs> test drove the <laughs> crap out of those things. Uh, but he lost his hearing uh, in a, in a pretty significant way because of the rock music and the cars and blah blah blah. So he wasn't able to sing with them. And uh, old Axl Rose stepped in for like four years. Yeah. And that was just recently. They were touring, and uh, Brian Johnson found some sort of medical solution to his... Uh, you know what he probably did? He popped his eardrum out and cleaned it. <laughs> he, he used that... <laughs> he, he probably used that air compressor technique. <laughs> <laughs> he popped that sucker back in. He was good to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they actually just released a new album, and uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll be touring again uh, starting this year. It would be awesome. It would be awesome. So, Bon Scott, definitely the best. However, I don't know if they would be where they are without Brian Johnson. And the signature sound when you think of ACDC today is not Bon Scott. Yeah. It's Brian Johnson. That's true. When you think of ACDC, I think of Thunderstruck, uh-huh. Back in Black, and, and just... Just yes. the, the anthem of rock. Yeah, and I, and I would try to do the voice right now, but I can't. It's it's. Yeah, please don't. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks. For I don't it. want to have to use the air compressor <laughs> technique on my ears. <laughs> yeah, and my vocal cords. Well, yeah, that I'm fine with. You can blow those out. <laughs> All right. Well, Brady, thanks for the questions, man. We really appreciate it. Keep them coming. And uh, if you have a question out there, like I said, you can send us an email at theseguysquestions at gmail.com. Yep. And also you can go to the website and leave us a voicemail, and it will probably get used on an upcoming episode. Brady, we will send you a koozie. You are getting a koozie, bro. Noise. Just uh, get on the uh, website and get on that email list, so that way we'll have your contact information, then I will contact you directly. That would be great. All right, well, let's go right into uh, Thank You Blinders. Thank You Blinders. Now, Four Questions is the segment where Mr. Beasy and I, we kind of banter a little bit before recording, so we kind of know what's coming up. Thinky Blinders is a little bit different, as in we don't have a clue what we're going to ask each other. You got a thinky because it's a blinder. Oh, okay. (laughs) And and a lot of times they're, you know, they make you think a little bit. Yeah. All right, who's going first today? Um, I'll give it a go. All right. Oh, why do women work now? (laughs) Well, it seems like doubling the workforce has only tripled the problems. How many problems at work wouldn't exist if it was just men or just women? Of course, this doesn't apply to all men or all women. But who is supposed to be raising the children now, the nanny? I have a very, very good answer to this question, but unfortunately, we're we're out of time. We got to get... <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, gosh... Do you think that, that that question is a was posed as a serious question? It's there's, definitely there's definitely some serious ramifications there. Sure, sure. I mean, I I feel like it comes from a genuine point. Like why why do both people need to be working right now? And 
the obvious answer is because everything's so freaking expensive now. Well, I was going to say that the obvious answer is because you have to. Yeah. It's it's pretty difficult to make a one-income family work if you don't have a pretty good source of income. And if you got two, even, let's say, moderate incomes, what's what's the mean right now? Like 35000 a year? Per person? Yep. Yeah, I think... Something like that, 38? I think the medium household household income right now in America is like 62. Okay. Well, let's let's call it 60. Okay. You know, you're looking at you're looking at 4 or 5,000 dollars a month after taxes. Mm-hmm. And by the time you put a house payment in there, you got a couple of cars. If you got kids, they got all kinds of crap going on. You got a couple <laughs> yeah. of credit cards uh-huh. that are revolving. And then on top of that, you got all the stuff that you want to do. And by the way, you got to eat. Yeah. And that's pay bills. Handy. So with every extra thing that we get in our life that we want, you know, it costs money. Sure. All of our hobbies. And it's just really tough to make it work. Um, the question, though, is is good for one reason, because it makes you think that it really wasn't all that long ago where women didn't work outside of the home. No, I mean, in not. very rare circumstances. We're talking, what, 60, 70 years ago. You know, in the 50s, it was it was becoming more normal, but it wasn't a normal thing. Yeah, wouldn't they get the right to vote? <laughs> The 20s, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but Gabe, I hadn't been a historian for too terribly long. <laughs> um, History is my bugaboo. Yeah, you could argue that as the rich become richer and richer and richer, uh, the squeeze really is happening in the middle class. And because that squeeze is there, you're, you're forcing yourself to have two working incomes in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, you could also argue that it would be better if you could – Make it so the woman doesn't have to work outside of the house. And you have a parent that's constantly there with, with your children. Yeah. I know for a fact that not coming from a place of, of sexism at all, if and when we have a child, I would love for my wife to be able to stay home. Yeah. Or or I would stay home and she could work. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Oh, bro. I, what if we... Because, you know, that. I've got a child. Yes, you And do. I could send her to work. Ooh. And then take care of the baby during the day while oh, I'm I thought at you home. Meant the, I then, thought you meant the baby. I thought well, you were going to send the baby to work. I'm, I mean, <laughs> she's she's rocking around two years old, mm. so it's about time for her to start uh, contributing to the house. Okay. All so right. Too wow. bad we don't have lithium mines here for her to go down and work. <laughs> <laughs> we do have cotton fields. Well, yeah, we and she's low enough to the ground. That's right. Be pretty easy to pick it. Yeah, be like eye level. I'm telling you. All right, all right. Maybe maybe, maybe we just stumble on something. We could have. We could have a... What if we had a whole crew of toddlers? <laughs> <laughs> just a trailer full of toddlers going from field to field to field picking cotton in the West Texas heat. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, man, we would be shot. <laughs> um, o should definitely be coming to get us pretty no quick. No trial. No yep. no jury from your peers because yep. uh, they're just going to take us out in the field and shade us. <laughs> yeah, we would get the, uh, we'd get the Jeffrey Epstein treatment. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think, I think the question is too complex to answer in this format. Um, I would say my my immediate reaction and yours as well is because it's necessary. Sure. And you could you could spend a lot of time on why it's necessary, but but that's the reason. And if it's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. I, I think you have to make the decision for your family. Sure. Now, my family consists of me and my wife, and she's a musician, and I'm a minister, and that's a level of poor that I don't wish on anybody. <laughs> uh, so we both have to work, and... Um, Anyway, maybe this podcast will take off enough where uh, we could just uh, we could just do podcasts. You know, that'd be great. It would That's be great. what I was getting at earlier was we could uh, we could just have the wives go out and work, and then we could sit at the house and podcast. Cause I dig that. I mean, I could take care of the baby. Okay. Well, you take care of the baby. I'll preach on the weekends. There you go. Preachers only work one day a week. That's right. So we could podcast the rest of the time. Beauty. Beauty. Problem solved. That's exactly right. Why do women work? Because the men want to sit at home and do the podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many middle-aged men do you think started a podcast in 2020 because of COVID? Oh man, the market was flooded. Yeah, it is. It's still flooded. Oh yeah. Like the tide has not receded at all. 
No. 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 And it's it's only well, it started to kind of kind of dwindle in the the new podcasts that are coming out. Okay. What do you uh, mean? The just the new like the brand new podcast. Okay. Um they have kind of dwindled a little bit. I but, see. I mean, you're still looking at like I think it's almost two million podcasts out there right now. Yeah, it's crazy. So So I feel so I was a youth pastor for a bit. And I was a youth pastor in Albuquerque, and Albuquerque's not really a, it's not really a metropolis. It's not a huge city, but it's, it's, it's a, big, it's big, and it's kind of a rough city. Mm-hmm. And all of my youth, it didn't matter if they, it didn't matter what, where they came from culturally. It didn't matter what race they were. All of them wanted to be rappers. Uh, that makes sense. And I think that that feeling is the same thing the middle-aged man is dealing with right now. Yeah. Where we all want to be podcasters. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Joe Rogan effect. Oh, that was... He should have called his podcast that. Well, <laughs> it's almost that. It's very close. Very close. Um, okay, good question. I'm glad you liked it. You ready for yours? Not really, but... By the well, way... I mean, if we're going to do that... <laughs> hang on. Are you are you getting into another sour? I'm gonna do me another uh, strawberry rhubarb. Oh wow! Okay, that uh, C plus rating is that uh, or C minus rating actually? C minus is that is that getting any better? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it there. Okay, fair enough. All right, question for uh, Mr. Beezy, your thinky blinder is. <laughs> All right. Oh, this bodes well. <laughs> What's the funniest way that you have ever broken the law? <laughs> and I'll, I'll give you a caveat. This is not. You do not have to have been caught breaking this law or a law, but just the funniest way that you've ever broken the law. Oh boy. I really wish this wasn't a thinky blinder because I could have, <laughs> you could have done some. <laughs> used a little bit of research time to get with, Oh, uh, Todd, Tom Disbar, attorney at law. That's right. And, that's right. Uh, Make sure you're past check, the statute of limitations. Some of these statute of limitations. <laughs> <laughs> now you and I, we've been, we've been out of breaking the law for probably what? 15 years. Yeah. Gosh, has it been that long? Yeah. Well, 14 yeah, years. Around about. Yeah. Something like that. And so, uh, Five. now I've tell, Tell every five years. <laughs> Dang, son, what have you been doing? Uh, let everybody know what you have been arrested for because that's public record. Oh, yeah. Petty theft. Petty theft. Yeah. Holy cow. First person. How did that go down? The first person to ever be arrested at the Hastings, <laughs> at the brand new Hastings in uh, Kenya, Texas. Good old Hastings. Yeah. It was good times. I missed that place. They uh, probably went out of business because you're stealing me. stuff. I mean,. <laughs> I did get quite a bit of stuff in there. <laughs> what uh, what did you uh, petty theft of, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, me. God. Movies, CDs, back when CDs. Oh, yeah, CDs and DVDs were a thing. Yeah, DVDs. This is before Blu-rays even come out. Hey, by the way, I'm going to let you go on with that, but I sounded like Kanye West just then. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let you keep going, but uh, Beyonce really deserved that reward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I haven't been in a Best Buy in a long time. Like, it's been quite a bit. Uh, I think I was there like a month ago. Okay. I'm going to date myself a little bit. ACDC just released an album in November, right? This past November. And I thought, well, I'm going to go buy the CD because I want a hard copy. Gross. Because I'm old school, right? So I was in A-Town. They have a little Best Buy there. Okay. I rolled in. I go in, and I asked where their CDs are. And they looked at me like I had a horn coming out of the middle of my face. They no longer sell CDs <laughs> in any form or fashion at Best Buy. Really? You cannot buy a CD at Best Buy. I literally go into Best Buy <laughs> and know exactly what I'm looking for, so I go directly there. Yeah, they were like, "Sir, we don't we don't sell DVDs, or we don't sell CDs anymore." I was like, what? I'm like, what do you mean you don't sell CDs anymore? So uh, that's not a thing. Okay, so the the point I was making was. I was wanting you to tell the story about what happened after you arrested and found. <laughs> so, yeah. So I was arrested for uh, petty theft, and I was smuggling DVDs That's out. Right. <laughs> now, you would, you had a pretty good system. I did. You'd take them out of the I'd, case. Yeah, I'd, I'd take the DVDs out. I'd pop the little... Uh, uh, what was that, Stephen? The magnet strip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get those taken off, and then 
I'd shove, I could shove two of them down my right jacket, uh, jacket sleeve. Were those the leather jackets? Yeah, they nice. were the leather jackets. Nice. You know those. <laughs> I do know those. <laughs> also procured a little... Um, Five on, finger discount. On the flip side of legal. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you <laughs> stick your stolen DVDs in your stolen jacket. Two DVDs in the stolen jacket left sleeve, two in the right sleeve, and then two in the jacket pocket because it was perfect size for a DVD case. Okay. And I got lackadaisical. And uh, I was like, man, I got this. And I can tell you exactly what movie it was, too. It was Black Hawk Down is the one that I did not even check. Oh, dang. And because they don't all have the little magnetic thing. No, they don't. So <laughs> I'm I'm walking out. I go through their little coffee department side that they had. Bells and whistles are going off, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> man, I could easily broke and run for this, but but you didn't run. No, you know, I was like, it's it's, it's my I've, I've done my time. Oh, okay. It's time I get, uh, time I reap the punishments. Wow. So I took it, took it like a man. Okay. And I uh, got took back into the security room. Nice. So nice. The manager was like, you're the first person that's ever been arrested. Yeah. Do you feel good about yourself? <laughs> I mean, me, I, me, me, I was like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Did you tell him how many that you had gotten out before? Well, so he goes, do you have anything on you that you shouldn't? I said, what do you mean? <laughs> This doesn't go off for no reason. Do you have anything on you that you shouldn't? I said, yeah. <laughs> so I, I pulled two DVDs out of my, my left sleeve, hand it to him. He goes, you got anything else? <laughs> yeah. So pulled the one out of the jacket pocket, hand it to him. He goes, come with me. Went back to, little, to the security station, called the cops, went off, did my thing, went to the old pokey. Came back out the next day. They let you out the next day? Yeah, next day. Had the <laughs> had the bill and everything posted. So uh, dealt with all of that. And then like a week later, the arresting officer calls me. And he's like, hey, uh, I've got your jacket at the station. <laughs> Do you want to come pick it up? I was like, no. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Because it was like. January. Nice. In nice. Canyon. Jacket would have been nice. Yeah, jacket would have been great. <laughs> Luckily, I had another one. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so I drive all the way to the police station. He meets me outside and he goes, Here's your jacket, man. I was like, All right, man, I appreciate it. And he goes, You got anything? Just give me a holler. I mean, nice. he's a super nice cop. Yeah. Enjoyed the interaction with him the whole time. So I was like, All right. <laughs> so I threw my jacket in the front seat and I hear a brat. I was like, what the crap? <laughs> so, are they trying to entrap me over here? <laughs> they put drugs in your jacket? What, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? So, we, uh, I, I haul ass back to the apartment. Because <laughs> it was you, me, and Colby that lived in that I apartment. I remember. So, I get to the apartment, and I pick up the jacket, and I throw it on the couch, and I go, something's in this jacket. We're about to find out what it is. I pull out. Two DVDs. <laughs> Deuce Bigelow, Mel Gigolo, and Blood In, Blood Out. <laughs> and I was like, well, I know what we're watching tonight. So, Stolen DVDs that made it through the police that, processing. That made it through the whole process. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was kind of fun. Yeah, it was good. I like that story. Oh. You think you think that's the you funniest know, minus, way you've ever broken the law? Minus the whole point of getting arrested. I mean, that, yeah, that was sucked. a drag. But uh, uh, then you have to uh, you have to call your mom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was rough. That was rough. Yeah, I only got arrested once too, and uh, yeah, I was there for that one. Yep, <laughs> yep. Seems to be a common thread with us. Well, yep, yep. I had to call my mom too. That was a, that was a tough one. Didn't like that at all. Do you think that's the funniest way you've ever broken the law? Oh yeah, by far. It was pretty good. By far the funniest. Pretty good. All right. Well, I think that's about all we got. I we got our four I questions. Mean, we got, we got the, the bonus. Binder? We got a, we got our bonuses from Brady. Yeah, thanks we did. again, Brady. You know what we didn't do? Uh-oh. We didn't tell everybody what's going on with old Rocky Jackson. Oh my goodness! So Rocky Jackson is some sort of blues artist, and um, his album "Testify" has the song in the doghouse now. And when we first plugged this a couple weeks ago, yeah, he had a hundred and seven views, mm-hmm. and I told everybody to go to this website and listen to the song and to leave a message from us. 
that fraternized with these guys sent, sent you, you here. There. Yep. Now he's got 133 views on this YouTube page on this on this particular song. Uh-huh. And uh, I put a comment there. I'm here from fraternize with these guys. Sent it. And by the way, he had no comments before this. I believe it. And uh, instead of returning some sort of kind word. Oh, Rocky Johnson disabled all of his comments on all of his videos. <laughs> so you can you can no longer comment on Rocky Jackson's YouTube page. That's crazy. I love it. So we little, shut it down. That's a little bit passive aggressive. I know. It felt great though. I mean, cuz I want to I want to believe that we had some diehard listeners that actually went to Rocky Jackson's page and left a comment. It had to have happened. Well, I mean, there was 30 Some- views that showed up out of nowhere, <laughs> and now he's getting his comment thread blasted. Yes. And he's like, ooh, I ain't got time for this. <laughs> I'm going to put them in the doghouse now. The doghouse <laughs> <right> now. <laughs> um, so I don't know how to pick on Rocky Jackson other than we're just going to keep playing his, his silly song. Yeah, I love it. So we're just going to keep on doing that. Keep on keeping up. What else you got? I think that's about it, you man. You think that's it? Well, I believe it, so. Instead of our signature send out, I tell you what, we're going to leave on this week. We're going to leave on Rocky Jackson, the man himself. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll catch you. Oh, I do got one. Uh oh. People are already tired, man. We got to do our send off. Oh, that's but right. Ponder this. Okay, ponder this and then Rocky Jackson. I like it. All right, my bad, bro. Here we go. Ponder this. What you got? Humans are most physically vulnerable when naked, yet nothing is more physically threatening than a naked person running at you. (laughs) (laughs) That is the truth. Yes. We'll see you guys next week. I'm in the doghouse now. I'm in the doghouse now. Get it, Rocky? Get, get, get it. Uh, it's just good tune, man. Pretty good stuff. We'll see y'all next week. Next Thursday. Be With there. A, uh, be square. Kind of a, a bonus outdoorsy episode because we're going to be fishing. Yeah, that's right. Good old Lake Fork. Yeah. Peace. Later.